And today is Soap Sunday. And what that means is you will have an opportunity to share what God has been speaking to you about in, in your prayer time. Again, it, you know, it's not a time to preach on your favorite subject or, or anything like that. It's, it's a time to open up your own devotional life. And as you've been having a relationship with God's word, what God has been speaking to you about during that time. Who would like to be first today? Or I might be preaching. Thank you, Richard. Well, I've been doing some Bible study with uh, Dave Larson uh, for the last couple of weeks now, and uh, or maybe three, I don't know now. <laughs> um, one of the scriptures that uh, we're supposed to be um, um, reciting, so to keep it memorized, is uh, from Matthew 22, 36 to 38. And uh, it says, um, Teacher, what, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So Jesus replied, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew 22, 36, 38. Um, observation in this. Um, I observed that, sorry, I observed that um, Jesus really wants us to do this because he says it's a, it's a must, you know, it's, it's you will, you know. So my application is to actually keep on with the Bible study and, you know, be with uh, Dave Larson and, and do the Bible studying and to keep the Word of God in my heart and in my soul and in my mind and just to carry, carry on as, as much as possible, <laughs> you know, and my prayer is that uh, obviously I need Jesus, you know, to be able to do this. I can't do this on my own because I, I can fall any time. So I need Jesus and I just pray that uh, Jesus would come into my heart and also into, into your hearts as you, as you study your, your Bibles and that uh, he'd keep us all in the straight and narrow. Thank you. Amen. It's not everybody that has the scripture memorized that they're going to share from. That's awesome. Dave, are you coming up? <laughs> if you happen to have the, the slide of uh, Kairos. Yeah, Dave Larson. Thanks. Anyway, um, I have a lot, of, a lot of people to thank for this soap. Um, my wife, of course, is not in here, but she's with Sunday School. And Pastor Davis taught us this life shape that helped me identify that during a time of personal failure, God was speaking to me and really helped me to use this um, time of failure to turn it around into an opportunity to become more like Jesus. And that's the verse, but do you happen to have the circle? The circle? Some, I, I created it for some reason, it's not working, Dave. Oh, okay. So I'll describe it. Uh, whether we're going through a joyful time, just our Bible study like Richard was sharing, or in my case, it was time when I f was in failure. And I asked the Lord, and he was so gracious to speak to my heart immediately. And um, in the life circle that might appear, um, the first thing we have to do is observe. God, what are you saying to me? That's where it began. I recognized I was wrong. And as soon as I asked the Lord, he began to speak to me. The verses that the Lord put in my heart to share are from Ephesians 4. 
Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Another way of saying that is, don't let the devil get in your business. Um, put up that whole armor of God and say, no trespassing. So here's what happened. A few days ago, now it's been more than a few days, I became instantly angry with my grandson. It was like a switch that turned on without thought or conscious decision. An emotional reaction that was completely overreactive to the situation. When I realized what I was doing a few seconds later, I was overwhelmed with guilt and shame. I felt condemnation. I was not aware of the fact that I needed immediately to repent and pray for reconciliation with my father in heaven and with our grandson. I truly love and cherish our grandson. So I was shocked at my own reaction. I began to ask the Holy Spirit, what caused such a harsh response? So the first step was, the Lord helped me to observe what was going on. And by God's grace, I wasn't in denial at that particular time. <laughs> I recognized that this is wrong. This has got to change immediately. So reflected and I discussed with my wife, you know, pray for me about this. I don't want this to ever happen again in my life. The plan was keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and it's very simple. I keep my mouth shut until I feel like the Holy Spirit is back in control. Um, duct tape is also helpful. You know. Just a thought. I carry tape with me whenever I can. And then as, as Jesus transforms us through failure, we become accountable. I'm accountable to my grandson, to the father, to my brothers here, Richard, Dave, others. Dave, Dave, Dave. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and my wife, of course, and gladly. I'm so grateful for accountability. Then the action begins to take shape. And I'm so grateful for that. So, um, so my observation and the application as I guess I've expressed it, I sought forgiveness from God. I asked God for, for the right timing to talk to my grandson and ask his forgiveness. And God, provided all of the above. I realized that God wanted to use this incident as a Kairos moment in my life. And he wanted me to come higher into greater freedom in Jesus. As I was praying and reflecting on what could have happened and caused this angry outburst, the Holy Spirit began to give me insights into my past into some areas that I had thought were healed, but they weren't. So, maybe I'll go to Celebrate Recovery Tuesday. I probably, I'm sure I need it, you know, really. So the Lord began to show me some things, things from my childhood. And I, I began this kind of like soul cleansing. And uh, with the Holy Spirit, the Lord began to show me some stuff, some garbage that was still in my soul. The pressure began to grow inside of me because I was not forgiving and coming into freedom from these situations. Failure to be attentive to and deal righteously with the small things resulted in a big problem, an explosion. Like, I didn't, where did that come from? Because the devil had wormed his way into my business. The devil had wormed his way into there some innermost places in my heart. 
But praise God, through understanding this and the power of Jesus to make all things new in every one of us, I can say with gratefulness to God, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm different, I've changed. I'm learning. Doc, God, I can learn. <laughs> Doc, Dave, come on. So God is so good. And after repentance and prayer for grandson, God just continued to speak. The Holy Spirit began to cleanse, continued to cleanse. And I honestly feel more free now than I felt in a long time. So here's my prayer for us as a family, because we are. Father, I thank you for your mercy, your patience with me, with us. Lord, you are so good. Thank you for helping me to humble myself, to repent, and to ask for our grandson's forgiveness, which he granted. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you brought about reconciliation and healing in our relationship. I give praise and thanks to you, our Lord, for your work of mercy, grace, forgiveness, and peace. All glory to you, God. You deserve it. Amen. Oops. Sorry. Dude, I thought sure he dropped the mic, didn't you? I... Who else would like to share a soap? Come on, Michelle. Do you promise to hang on to the mic? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this one, um, my soap is on John 16, 7. Um, and it's the amplified version, but they're all great, right? Um, it says, but I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the helper, who is the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and uh, standby, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the Holy Spirit to you to be in close fellowship with you. So my observation <clears throat> was the Holy Spirit is infinite, and yet he is designed to be my helper. He is always ready to be there to offer assistance to me. All I need to do is ask and invite him to be with me, inviting him to be with me every step of the way in my life. Often when the path before me looks easy, I can see where I am tempted to walk it alone instead of relying on the Lord and inviting the Holy Spirit to walk with me. Yet these times are my greatest times where I can uh, miss the mark and stumble and fall because my source is not found within me, but within him <clears throat> in every area of my life. So through the easier times and through the rough times, the gift given to me when Christ returned to the Father <clears throat> was continuous presence of the Holy Spirit to fill all the areas of help, to assist me on the paths that are before me. Because um, my helper, my comforter, who helps me when um, I feel anxious, worried, fearful, sad, he reminds me of the Lord's uh, promises of his perfect love. He's my advocate and my fighter for what is right and what is good my crusader who campaigns vigorously for change, my intercessor who inter intervenes and petitions on my behalf and on the behalf of those that God puts on my heart. He is my counselor to guide me and mentor me, to converse with me and to help me uh, sort things out. He is my truth teacher, guiding me and eliminating, um, excuse me, illuminating the truth for me. My strengthener who empowers me to stand firm and hold on to what I know is right <clears throat> and to be able to move forward on the path that he's called me to walk without weariness or despair. He's my permanent dweller that is with me forever to give me all of the available resources of God himself. And he is my standby. He is waiting at all times to be utilized, ready for duty and deployment. Um, I'm not sure what I wrote there. Anyways, <laughs> but he is ready... Um, standing standing by um, deployment um, on the basis of the earliest availability um, my application is based is to just recognize to stop and recognize and invite the Holy Spirit into every area of my life um, to enjoy the gift that he left for me as I walk in the areas that God leads me um, 
And then my prayer is, Lord, what an amazing gift that you've left for me, for us to utilize. An amazing gift that I'm not sure I've fully used to the greatest potential that you've designed the Holy Spirit to be in my life. But a gift that I want to fully begin to embrace in all areas um, and to fellowship with and be close through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Um, thank you for being so readily available to me, always, in every area. Your help is truly what I need to continue the walk that the Lord has set before me, and to walk it in joy and peace, regardless of the circumstances that surround me. I am awed by the power and the glory of your spirit within me, Lord. <clears throat> Someone so infinitely great could live within me. Someone who I deem is so very small. <laughs> Thank you for choosing to dwell within me, within us, and permeating uh, me with your presence. In Jesus' name. Makes me just want to hang out with the Holy Spirit for a while. He is all of those things. Who else would like to share a soap today? Come on, Carianna. Say that again? I have to refine my scripture. I, have to I get that, actually. Oh. So. I have a Bible, too, if that might help you. That might be faster. Than um, <clears throat> so my scripture today is Zechariah 2. Uh, what was it 5 or 8? Yeah, that will help. <laughs> I'll be able to see it. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, 2-5, and it's, uh, King James here, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. And so the context of that is, you know, he he's speaking about Jerusalem. Um, Zechariah. Two, did you say? Yeah, two five. That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so um, I was having a having a moment. <laughs> I was very upset. Um, uh, there are times when you know the the situations in your life, the people in your life that um, when they just um, speak the opposite of what needs to be spoken and it can break your heart you know when when the things that you're praying and fighting for look at you and say lose hope now <laughs> you know like that moment like just just stop hoping stop hoping now so I had that kind of moment and I was having a hard time handling it and um, so you know he's he is faithful and he uses his word um, to comfort us and to speak to us. And um, he's always been good that way. Um, so I, I flipped to a scripture. And it was funny because uh, a girlfriend of mine, this is like one of her life scriptures. And she tells it to me when I'm discouraged, when she's discouraged, when, she, when she's talking. It's like, well, don't worry, because, you know, he's the the glory around us, the fire around us and the glory within, and we can do this, you know, like, yeah. And so it just forgot to bring me to that scripture in that moment. It was so him. That was, it was just wonderful. And um, a little farther along in 4.8, it talks about not despising small beginnings. And so, um, I guess my observation is just how awesome he is and thanking him for that moment and that it's available to us for him to speak like that when we need it. And um, the application is, you know, um, to not lose hope when people tell us to lose hope because he is, he's a fire around us, you know. At, um, when the prophet saw all the fiery chari chariots and he prayed for his servant, just to see that and then your whole outlook changes you know it's like we have to remember that that's the truth of the situation is you know his 
his glory and his fire are there and he is always working even when things look hopeless even when you know the little cloud of his glory looks the size of a man's hand and it doesn't seem real he's he's there and he's working and um, um, today during worship when we were talking about how mighty he was I was reminded of the Bible refers to him as mighty to save and that um, cracked me up you know because sometimes we you know we worship him for his attributes but we forget what he uses them for you know and so it's like you're mighty you're mighty and it was like I'm mighty to save <laughs> you know like the reason why I'm mighty is to save you guys so you know just so you know this is like a thing um, and it cracked me up so um, I guess my prayer is Lord we thank you and we recognize you for your power and your might and how big and glorious you are and we praise you that you apply it to every situation that troubles our heart and every situation that troubles our heart troubles your heart Lord that you are fighting with us and for us and you are God with us amongst us thank you Amen. Does anybody else have a soap to share? Okay, come on. That's okay. You know, there was there was that time for everyone. Um, can it be more than a verse? Uh, like together, or uh, like like Psalm sixty one. <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, Psalm 61 has really been ministering to me. Um, wow, my screen's totally dim. Um, but the part, I mean, it all speaks to me. Um, he hears our prayers. It's like, oh God, hear my prayer. Listen to my heart's cry. For no matter where I am, even when I'm far from home, I will cry out to you for a Father's help. When I'm feeble and overwhelmed by life, guide me into your glory where I am safe and sheltered. <laughs> Lord, you are a paradise of protection for me. You lift me high above the fray. None of my foes can touch me. When I am held firmly in your wraparound presence, keep me in the gl this glory. Let me live continually under your splendor shadow. Hide my life in you forever. Um, the, the, you treat me like a king, giving me a full and abundant life. Years and years of reigning, like many generations rolled into one. I will live enthroned with you forever. <clears throat> Guard me, O oh God, with your unending, unfailing love. Let me live my days walking in grace and truth before you, and my praises will fill the heavens forever, fulfilling my vow to make every day a love gift to you. I just, I heard him speaking to me about uh, who we are, who I am, who I am in him. Uh, you know, you think you know who you are and then you learn a little bit more <laughs> about how much you don't know. Um, but, but how he, he treats us and how he thinks of us and how he perceives us um, is so different than how we see ourselves. And so my encouragement from this scripture was, you treat me like a king. You give me a full and abundant life. And, and it was like, you need to believe that, and you need to de declare that and, and proclaim that over your life. Because, man, I don't feel like that. <laughs> you know, we, our feelings are, can change and shift and blow us to and fro, but, you know, he's always constant, and he's always, he's always there with you. Um, and I, f I don't know if it's just me or if it's maybe... Uh, maybe something that the church is be not believing in or we are believing in but it's not showing and i i feel like there's like this helplessness um going around whether it's me or not i don't know but that we need to know 
that he treats us like kings and that we need to recognize that we are kings and queens and daughters and sons of the most high God and that he is bigger he's greater and that he needs to be he needs to be the bigness and he needs to be the greatness in our mindsets uh, we can't I can't let uh, <laughs> I can't let that that whatever the enemy the tax of the enemy like oh na, 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 na. you know i can't let that be my god i can't let that be in my mind i have to remember i'm a king and he gives me a full and abundant life and years of years of reigning like many generations rolled into one i mean it's multi-generational He's, it's ours right now. It's ours for the taking right now. And we need to believe that for our families, for the generations, you know, to come, for even the past generations. Just, I mean, all of the, the wealth and, and what our, our forefathers have done for us to be where we're at today. I mean, the honor. Anyway, that is, that's what I've, <laughs> that's what he's been showing me. Um, and... So apply it. Declare it in your life. <laughs> is, is that it? So my prayer? Okay. So in Jesus' name, Papa, we come to you this morning with open hearts, and we, we yield our minds to you, and we say, this is who we are. We are kings, and we live like kings, full and abundant in all areas of life years like years and years of reigning lord the wealth of your kingdom just comes and it rolls in like a flood and it consumes us and overpowers all of the circumstances and situations in our life and we say yes we say yes to your glory we say yes to you your kingdom and how you rule and how you reign and we choose to keep our eyes focused on you all the days of our lives that we can give you glory forever and ever lord in jesus name amen good Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm, I'm going to share a soap. I, I haven't gotten to share a soap for months. It's like, because there's, and that's wonderful. I mean, that's like a really good problem to have. But I, I want to share out of Psalm 86, verse 11 today. And, and this is a prayer of David. Da David prayed this. He said, teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Now, you know, if you read the Bible every year like me, you've probably read that verse many times. You know, I, I've even prayed it. You know, when I find a, a prayer in the Bible, I, I like to take that into my own prayer life. But this year, when I read it, it just kind of grabbed me differently. And, and which I know means that I need to take that into prayer, take it into meditation. You know, there is so much in these three sentences in this verse. My observation, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. The psalmist, the cry of the psalmist is, is for God himself to teach him his ways. He didn't want to just learn more about God. He didn't just want someone to teach him about God. He wanted God himself to teach him his ways. And the result would be, I will walk in your truth. If you teach me your ways, I will walk in your truth. If you teach me, I will walk in it. You know, there, there's a reason that, that as your pastor, I, I, I'm continually pushing you to have your own personal devotional life you know and let and learn to let the holy spirit speak to you to teach you when god teaches you something it won't be theoretical it won't be just something that you understand better because someone taught you it will become part of your life you will walk in it teach me your way and i will walk in your truth unite my heart to fear your name Having a united heart, I think it has to do with focus. The, the word unite here means to be one, to, to unify. Make my heart wholly united in fearing your name. You know, another way to say this might be, Lord, don't let me be half-hearted in this. Let me be all in in walking in the fear of the Lord. Now, this word fear means a holy respect. Uh, a reverence for God. If you look up the word in the concordance, you'll also see the word morally 
tied with it. The fear of the Lord affects who I am morally. The fear of the Lord affects how I think, how I act, how I live. Now the application. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. You know, it's great to hear people teaching and, and sharing the truth of God's word. You know, it, it's important for us to be here on a Sunday morning to worship together corporately, to gather together and hear his word. The Bible says, do not forsake that assembling, that assembling together. But that does not take the place of my own quiet time with God. It doesn't take the place of letting God himself teach me. You know, I, I try to listen to a number of messages each week uh, from various pastors and leaders. You know, when I'm working out at the Y or, or I might be doing something else, I, I, I'm listening to someone preach or teach. But that is not a substitute. It cannot be a substitute for me spending time with God and asking Him to teach me His way, to speak into my life. Having others teach me is not a substitute for letting Him personally teach me. Now, you know, listening to others can be advantageous in many ways. You know, I, I've listened to a message sometimes and it, and it just, it stimulated me to go after things. You know, I, I'll hear someone sharing something in a message and I'll, I'll take that in, into my prayer life. I'll take that verse of scripture that, that was referenced and I'll begin to meditate it, on it so that God can speak it to me. But see, when I hear someone else share revelation... It is great, it is good, and it brings understanding to my mind. But it's when God speaks it to me that it becomes part of my life. Do you understand what I'm saying? That, that, that's when, you know, my understanding can be enlarged by listening to someone expound upon revelation. But when God makes that revelation mine, it's different. When I am describing someone else's revelation, I will probably have to use their words to describe it. But when God makes that revelation real to me, I'll be able to describe it in my own words. I will be able to articulate it myself from my heart. Unite my heart to fear your name. You know, God has really been challenging me for, for several months about the area of the fear of the Lord. You know, I've actually heard Christians in our day say that the, the fear of the Lord is Old Covenant. You know, we're, we're in the New Covenant. Now, now, we are in the New Covenant. But the idea that the fear of the Lord has been done away with or something is not a biblical premise. Both Jesus and, and the disciples would really disagree with that. You know, Jesus talked about the fear of the Lord. He talked about fearing, not fearing those who can only kill your body but to fear him who could kill both soul and body. Jesus talked about it. The writers of the New Testament epistles, it is very much a New Testament thing. And, and I just want to read a quick passage uh, because this is where I went to as I was doing this soap. Hebrews 12, 28 through 29. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. How many know that Hebrews is in the New Testament? Good, a uh, good third of you. You know, unlike any other book in the New Testament, Hebrews contrasts the Old Covenant with the New Covenant. The Old Covenant sacrifices the blood of bulls and goats. The New Covenant sacrificed the Lamb of God. The Old Covenant High Priest, the New Covenant Jesus, the High Priest. The Old Covenant Priesthood, the New Covenant Priesthood of all believers. Hebrews talks about a better covenant established on better promises. And it says that the way to serve God acceptably in the new covenant is with reverence and godly fear. Unite my heart to fear your name. Let me be all in on this, not, not partially. I, I want to live with such a reverence for God, such a holy respect for his person, that it affects how I think, it, it affects how I talk, and how I live. The founder of Basic Youth Conflicts, to find the fear of the Lord as walking in the constant awareness of His holy presence. As you and I walk in the constant awareness of His holy presence, it affects what we allow 
to go into our minds. It affects how we speak and, and how we act. Something that, that, that God said to me several months ago, it just keeps coming back to me. He said this, I am more concerned about your character than I am your comfort. Now, when I first heard that, I didn't care for it. But, I, but I, I, I know he's more concerned with us becoming like Jesus than he is with us being comfortable. And I know the process. You know, I mean, look at the process Jesus went through. My goodness. It, it, but I've learned that it is in difficulty and struggle that we become united in our heart. It's actually when everything isn't all lined up and going perfectly that, that my heart is purified and I begin to have a single focus. So this is my prayer, and I want to invite the worship team to come up. I, I just like to sing, close this service with a song, but, but here's the prayer. Father, teach me your way so I can walk in your truth. Help me to consistently and daily learn to wait before your presence, to live in your word and get your word inside of me. I want to be instructed by you. I want to know you. Teach me your ways and I will walk in your paths. Help me to see and observe what you want to teach me and what you are doing in my life. Father, unite my heart to fear your name. I want to be all in, 100%. I want to live in a holy respect for who you are. And I want that to be reflected in every part of my life. You have called me to be holy because you are holy. Send your fire and Lord purify every area of my life in Jesus name. Amen. Maybe we could stand together. Can we can we just just ask Holy Spirit to send us fire. Holy Spirit, send your fire. You guys, my heart's broken right now. <laughs> Holy Spirit, send your fire. For it's not about men and his ways. It's about you and your ways. Holy Spirit, send your fire. This is going to be hard for me, but um, <laughs> I was battling sharing this earlier. Then when he spoke, and then everything paused. I was like, "Okay, God, you always have a way of doing this with your Holy Spirit." But um, He given me Exodus. Um, um, this last, well, the last couple years, actually, it's been kind of a trying time for us. I mean, we've just went through a lot of stuff. And um, anyway, God gave me Exodus 20, 18 through 21. So when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and spoke, they trembled and, and spoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us, we will die. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Well, when I've been going through a lot of stuff, I've been like, God, I, I feel like I'm just in that thick darkness. I'm just, I just can't find victory. You know, you start walking and then you go in places and areas you've helped with ministries and then, then God all of a sudden says, hey, you need to do something. So you do something. And like right now here, I'm battling. I'm like, I haven't been here very often, God. I'm sure people, half people don't know me. I don't want to walk up there. But then he's sharing and then they're speaking and, and then he just put on my heart that 
I think there's a lot of other people that are in the same position as I am. They've been in that thick darkness. God has called them, and they know they've called them, but they've been too scared to go to that darkness because they were afraid that God's presence wasn't going to be strong enough to help them. Just like those people that were saying, I don't want to go there because, you know, God may slay me. I don't want to hear his voice, but he's not a God like that. You know, and God is just reminding me and I guess making me feel like I need to remind everybody in here. If you're like Moses and you're going you know, and you're be battling things. Maybe people are attacking you or your health or whatever it is. But be brave enough to take that step and say, God, although I don't know where I'm going, this scares the heck out of me, but I'm going to step out and I'm going to walk into that darkness knowing that your light and your presence is going to be there to protect me in everything I do. So I just pray right now, God, that for anybody and everybody that is dealing with some thick darkness in their life right now, whatever maybe that may be, and maybe they're doubting your presence, God, remind them that even in that darkness, your presence can seep through, God. And even that a little spark can light a fire, Lord Jesus. And I just pray that you just give people the boldness to do what you've called them to do, to step out in those giftings and to walk in the anointing that he has placed on them lives. God, because you've already approved of them and you love them so much. Amen. Amen. Receive that. Oh
Lord said not to end this service. And, and to just let everyone know the altars are open. If you want to come up and just spend some time with the Lord, let him seal in your heart what, what he's been doing in you. But at the same time, if you need to go, if, if you've got to be somewhere, you know, we release you to go. But Father, in the name of Jesus, let every one of us carry that cry in our heart. Throughout this week, God, show us your glory. Holy Spirit, we want to know you. We want to know you intimately. We want to know your heart, your passion. We want to be instruments that release you wherever you go. Father, we just give ourselves afresh to you today, God. In Jesus' name. Says.